Welcome to week four of Introduction to Algebra. This week's topics are solving equations with variables on both sides and multi-step equations. First, we're going to take a look at solving equations with variables on both sides. When we solve an equation that has variables on both sides, the goal is to rearrange the equation to have all the variables on one side of the equation and all the constants on the other side of the equation. We are going to take a look at four different examples. In our first example, we have 7 plus 3x equals negative 1 minus 5x. Step 1 is to get the variables on the same side of the equation. So in order to do this, I am going to add 5x to both sides and simplify, which will give me 7 plus 8x equals negative 1. I now have a variable on only one side of the equation. So my second step is to get the constants on the opposite side of the equation. In order to do that, I'm going to subtract 7 from both sides and I'm going to simplify to get 8x equals negative 8. My last step will be to isolate this x by dividing both sides by 8. That will yield the solution x equals negative 1. In our second example, we have the equation 10x equals negative 2x plus 36. Again, my first step will be to get the variables on the same side of the equation. So in order to do this, I'm going to add 2x to both sides. I'm adding 2x because the 2x that's here is negative, and I would like my 2x terms to cancel out. So I add 2x and I simplify, and I get 12x equals 36. Normally, my second step would be to get the constants on the other side of the equation, but in this case, I already have constants on only one side, so I'm a step ahead. Therefore, my last step will be to divide both sides by 12 in order to get the x by itself, and that will give me the solution x equals 3. In example number 3, I have the equation 4x plus 2 equals 4x minus 3. My first step is to get those variables on the same side of the equation, and I'm going to do that by subtracting 4x from both sides. When I do that, however, you might notice that all the variables cancel out, and I'm left with 2 equals negative 3, which is not possible. So clearly that can't be the answer. When this happens, the answer is no solution or the null set. And you may recall that this is the symbol for null set. What this means is that there is no possible number that I could substitute for x into this equation that will make it true. So if I went back to my original equation, there's no possible number that I could plug in here for x and get a true equation. Therefore, there's no solution. So if you have a problem like this, instead of having a number for an answer, you simply write the words no solution or the null set. In example number 4, I have 5x plus 4 equals 4 plus 5x. So when I start out by getting the variables on the same side of the equation and I subtract 5x from both sides, you might notice that 5x minus 5x will cancel on this side but 5x minus 5x will also cancel on this side, and I'm left with 4 equals 4. My variables have canceled out, but this is a true statement. 4 does equal 4. So in this case, my answer is the set of all real numbers. What this means is that there's an infinite set of numbers that I can substitute for x in the original equation that will make it true. I could pick any real number and plug that in for x on both sides of the equation and get a true statement. Therefore, instead of writing a number as an answer for a problem like this, you simply write the set of all real numbers. You should have copied all of the notes on this particular topic into your notebook. When solving equations, there are several possible solutions to any equation. The first situation is when the solution is a variable equal to a single number. 
This means there's only one solution, such as the example x equals 5. Sometimes when you simplify, the solution looks like a number equal to a different number. This is when there's no solution. So for example, if you get 2 equals negative 6 or some similar situation, your answer is no solution. It's also possible that the solution will look like a number equal to itself. This is when there are infinite solutions. So for example, if you get 5 equals 5 or some other number equal to itself, your answer is infinite solutions. Please copy these possible solutions into your notebook. Next we're going to talk about multi-step equations. These are equations that require several operations to solve them. Unfortunately, they don't usually follow a set pattern, so you have to really look at each problem individually and figure out a strategy. Oftentimes, there's many ways to solve the same problem, but if you're not sure how to get started, here's some set steps that you should always check first to get you rolling. First, simplify when possible. Then, combine the like terms on same sides of the equation. Get the variables on one side of the equation, then get the constants on the other side of the equation and solve for the variable. We are going to do three examples of multi-step equations. In your notebook, you should have copied the information from the slide that was just shown, which gives you some starting points for solving multi-step equations. In our first example, we're going to start with the problem w minus 14 divided by 4 equals 2w. In order to solve this problem, I need to look at what are the operations that are taking place. Keep in mind that a fraction bar is a grouping symbol, so that means I need to keep the w minus 14 together for now. This means w minus 14 divided by 4. The inverse of divide is multiply, so I'm going to multiply both sides by 4 in order to get rid of that divide. In doing so, I get the equation w minus 14 equals 8w. Now I'm one step closer to solving it. I have a variable on both sides, so I'm going to start by subtracting w from both sides in order to get all the variables on the same side. This will give me negative 14 equals 7w. And at this stage, I have 7 times w, so the way to undo times is to use the inverse divide, and I'll divide both sides by 7, which will give me the final solution of negative 2 equals w, or sometimes we like to write the variable on the left, it doesn't really matter, w equals negative 2. In going back and looking at this problem, what steps did I use? My first step was to multiply. And the reason I multiplied is because I wanted to do the inverse of divide. My second step was to subtract the variable. What I was trying to do here was get all the variables on one side. The third step was to divide and I divided because that was the inverse of multiply, and when I was done, I had my solution. Okay. Our next example is the equation 4 times y plus 8 minus 7 equals 15. This is a pretty long equation, so it's going to have a number of steps. The first thing you want to do is look to see, is there anywhere here that I could simplify? And what I would do to start this problem out is I would simplify by distributing this 4 times both terms in parentheses. In doing so, I'm going to get 4y plus 4 times 8 is 32 minus 7 equals 15. I now have like terms on the same side of the equation. So I'm going to combine these two like terms, which will give me the expression 4y 
plus 25 on this side equals 15. And now this should look like a regular two-step equation. So to solve this, I would subtract the constant from both sides, subtract 25. That yields 4y equals negative 10. Since I have 4 times y, the inverse of times is divide. So I would divide both sides by 4. And my final answer will be y equals negative 2 and a half. You could write this as 5 halves. You could write this as 10 fourths. But it's a negative 2 and a half either way. So this is my final solution. So what steps did I use to solve this? The first thing I did up here was I simplified. And the way that I simplified was I used the distributive property. So I had to distribute. My second step was to combine like terms. My third step was to divide. And I divided because I needed to do the inverse of multiply. And that yielded my solution. We're going to take a look at one more problem today. Our third example is 5m minus 3. Then in brackets, I have 7 minus, in parentheses, 1 minus 2m, parentheses, bracket, all equal to 0. That's a really long problem. So this is going to take several steps to solve. The first thing that I would do is I would simplify by looking inside my grouping symbols. Inside the brackets, I have parentheses. And I have a subtraction in front. So that means I have 7 subtract everything that's inside. So first, I'm going to simplify this. This means I will have 5m minus 3. And in brackets, I will have 7 subtract 1 and subtract a negative 2m. Remember, subtracting a negative means I'm really adding. So that becomes plus 2m, keep my brackets, all equal to 0. And now I can simplify one step further because I have like terms inside this grouping symbol. So that gives me 5m minus 3 times 6 plus 2m, all equal to 0. My next step is going to be to distribute. So I'm going to take this negative 3 and distribute times 6 and times 2m. So that's negative 3 times 6 and negative 3 times 2m. That gives me 5m minus 18, because it's really a negative 3 times 6, minus 6m. It's important to remember that this negative goes with the 3. So I'm really distributing a negative 3. Now I actually have some like terms on the same side. I have 5m here and negative 6m here. So I can combine those like terms. And I will get negative m minus 18 is equal to 0. At this point, at this point, there's several different ways that I could solve this. I could add m to both sides. I could add 18 to both sides and then divide by a negative. Usually, if I have a negative variable, what I like to do is add a positive to both sides. So I'm going to add m to both sides. And I'm going to end up with negative 18 equals m. Or you might like to write it as m equals negative 18. These two e equations are equivalent. It doesn't matter which way you write it. It's just tradition that we often put the variable on the left. So this is my final solution. m equals negative 18. So if I go back and I look and ask, what did I have to do first? My first step up here was I had to simplify. And I had to follow my groupings. 
So I had to look at the grouping symbols in order to do that. The next thing I did was I combined like terms And I did that here when I did 7 minus 1. The next thing I did was I simplified some more by distributing. So that was my third step. Distribute. After that, I combined like terms again. So you can see sometimes you go back and forth and you do similar steps more than once. Lastly, I added my variable to both sides. And that was how I isolated the variable, which finally yielded a solution at last. That was a lot of steps. Good job persevering all the way through that one. That's our last example today. Thank you for watching this Weibark production.